to achieve the intelligent management of resources. Technologies are used to monitor and track goods and services. This is similar to industrial processes of today, but updated to equitably distribute goods and services to all. This is the basis for a total global systems approach. I can imagine an abundance economy where robots do most of the work, where our food, our clothing, our shelter are created by machines. And I think it's very realistic for us to eliminate, completely eliminate absolute poverty worldwide, not just in the United States, by the year 2035. Nobody needs to starve ever again. That could be an enormous milestone that is achievable because of technology. When we computerize everything and start producing things and make things available, it'll be too cheap to monitor. With the most capable computers, we can arrive at more appropriate decisions on a global scale. I have no doubt that machines will eventually be assigned more and more decision making. For example, years ago, a pilot would look out of a plane and says, I think I'm about a mile high, but today they have Doppler radar and they know exactly how high they are. So we don't want human guesswork anymore when a machine can do it. So I see the future as using very sophisticated computers that make decisions. Now, how do computers make decisions? They have their tentacles out into transportation, agriculture, so they can tell you when the soil is depleted, when it has less water, because it has sensors built into the soil. The computer will be connected to weather departments, earthquake zones, everything, so I feel that eventually government will become computerized. Today, the world's fastest computer is in China. The Tiani supercomputer is capable of 33.86 quadrillion floating point operations per second. 80% of what doctors do is going to be done by computers. Is that really true? Absolutely. I have zero doubt. You won't want a doctor to do your diagnosis or monitoring or pick your therapy. That's why IBM Watson's trying to pick cancer therapies because it's too complex for humans to do. There's 15,000 diseases, 15,000 devices, drugs, therapies, prescriptions. Do you think if you're a cardiac patient, your cardiologist has read even a hundred of the last 5,000 articles published last year on cardiac disease? Not a chance. But the computer can go through it all. Absolutely. You may have seen uh, IBM's Watson defeat the world champion in the game of Jeopardy. Well, that same technology can also be used to solve legal problems, to answer questions in call centers, to make medical diagnoses. These are just wondrous technologies that are having enormous implications going forward. I think 10, 20 years from now, there will be very few areas, maybe none, where human judgment is better than machine judgment. So the computers will eventually be put in charge of everything, except human behavior. Technology can eliminate critical life or death errors. A machine instead of humans fills the prescriptions. The robot gives a huge amount of confidence because we know that pharmacists and pharmacy technicians are incredibly skilled people, but they're humans and they will occasionally make mistakes. You know, we give something like three million doses of drug in three months here, so even a 1% error rate is, is far too high. And so eventually you're going to get to computerized government. And that's what the end of corruption, because they don't have ambition. Computers don't say, I'd like to be president of the world. I want to control people. They don't have a gut reaction. If utilized in this global systems approach, we could surpass the practice of political decisions based on power and advantage. And even computer experts are writing books now on the machine takeover. Watch out. They're not going to take over. They're going to be assigned the decision making. I'm not worried about the machines getting angry and taking over. I'm worrying about people maybe getting angry if we don't figure out an equitable way to use these technologies to create shared prosperity. The Venus Project proposes ways to achieve this. Interconnected, sustainable cities utilize cyber centers which coordinate industries, transportation systems, public health care, and the flow of goods and services. These cybernated centers would connect all cities and help with environmental reclamation. In the beginning, interdisciplinary technical teams would manage productivity until even these tasks are automated.